Number 21. A person measures his or her heart rate by counting the number of beats in 30 seconds. If 40 plus or minus 1 beats are counted in 30 uh, plus or minus 0.5 seconds, what is the heart rate and its uncertainty in beats per minute? Okay, so this question is a little complex and there's a lot to it, so let's try to unpack it a little bit. Let's first work with what it's asking us to do. Uh, so it says, what is the heart rate and its uncertainty in beats per minute? So let's just recall uh, the simple model uh, that we can base our answer off of, right? So really what they're looking for is for us to answer in the following way. We have to give a number that represents the measurement we're trying to find, and we're gonna be then plus or minus uh, the uncertainty associated. So they want the answer in this format. Okay, um, doesn't sound too hard, but this problem is a little complicated. Um, so now, just uh, work with me here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take um, this model that I just drew and kind of uh, expand on it a little bit, all right? So instead of writing um, the, uh, pers uh, the measurement uh, plus or minus the uncertainty, I'm gonna take it one, more, uh, one step further and I'm gonna say it's the measurement plus or minus the total uncertainty okay so that should be that shouldn't be too far of a jump all right and the reason why i'm stressing that the uncertainty has to be the total uncertainty is because it depends on what you're uh, what you're measuring and how you're calculating your measurement you know for example so just think about what's going on we have uh, a measured value of beats right so somebody measured the amount of beats that the heart is pounding and then uh, somebody also measured the time. Now, there's uncertainty, That's and what we have to do is we have to find now beats per time, a.k.a. beats per minute. So if there's associated associated with the first measurement, meaning the number of beats, and there's uncertainty associated with the second measurement as well, that probably means that the final value of beats per minute will have a combined uncertainty. Right? Or, in other words, an uncertainty that should be higher than either of the two measurements on their own. So I think that makes intuitive sense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a fo uh, the following formula down. So I'm going to write something like this. The total, total uncertainty should be equal to the uncertainty found with measure one, uh, measurement one plus the uncertainty of measurement two you know, plus the uncertainty if we had a measurement three, et cetera. Okay, so you can apply this equation on many other types of problems. Now, instead of writing the total uncertainty as, a, as equal to the uncertainty of the first measurement plus the uncertainty of the second measurement, um, what we could do instead is we could always find the percent uncertainty as well, right? So, the, so we could say that the total percent uncertainty right, should equal the percent uncertainty of measure one plus the percent uncertainty of measurement two plus the percent uncertainty of measurement three, etc. Okay, so this is definitely going to be one thing we're going to be talking about. Um, I'm probably going to do that in the next step. I won't do that right now. So we'll come back to that idea, but I think it makes intuitive sense. So first, why don't we work on the idea of finding the measurement value, okay? So part one is essentially going to be to try to find, so we have to find uh, beats, which I'll label as B, per minute. Now what they gave us is they gave us beats and seconds, right? So um, they told us that it was 40, and by the way, when I'm calculating, um, the beats per minute, okay, I'm gonna use the base numbers, all right? I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna worry about the uncertainties. So what do I mean by base numbers? I mean, so if you go back to the problem, I just underline the 40. That's considered the base uh, measurement of, of beats, and then the base measurement of seconds is going to be 30.0. So when I'm finding my base measurement number, um, where I have to do a division, I'm gonna use the base measurements of the um, measurements that were given. So so the beats value is going to be uh, 40. 
And they gave me also 30.0 seconds. That's going to be the base unit of seconds. But somehow I have to find beats per minute. Well, I know the beats and I know seconds, so I think I can find minutes, right? So basically if I take the 30 seconds and I convert that into minutes, that should allow me to find beats per minute, right? So essentially of the first step, I'll break it down into maybe a couple of smaller parts, right? So let's first take 30.0 seconds and convert that into minutes. That's a good first step. So let's write down what we're given and seconds on the bottom, minutes on the top. And now uh, there in one minute, there are 60 seconds, right? The seconds cancel giving us the value in minutes. So what does that work out to be? That should work out to be 0 0.500 minutes. Okay, great. Now, why did I write it in that way? Well, you always have to take into account significant figures. So the measured quantity in the calculation was 30.0. This is what was actually measured. And this value has three significant figures. Therefore, my answer should have three. Now, some of you might be saying, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. If I'm looking at what's being calculated here, I see that the 30.0 has three, but the 60 has two. So shouldn't the answer have only two? Well, the thing about the, the thing about this conversion right here is that it is an exact value. It's not a measured value. What do I mean by that? We, there are exactly 60 seconds in one minute. It's not a measured value. We didn't have to take out our stopwatch to measure that. We, it, it's a known fact. So therefore, and this is a general rule about significant figures, you're only going to use the significant figu figures of measured quantities. Okay, so since this is an exact quantity, um, we don't have to take it into account. So I started with three sig figs. I'm going to end with three. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, part B of this will be to actually now find, right now we can finally find the beats per minute. Okay, so all we have to simply do is take the 40 beats that were measured and divide it by now the 0 0.500 uh, minutes. Now, when we calculate this, uh, the answer comes out to be 80, right? Beats per minute. Okay. Now, some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Doesn't this number have only one sig fig? And this one down here has three, and therefore my answer should only have one. Well, it does, right? I, I didn't put a decimal there, so it actually does have one. Another way to think about it really, and this is part of the confusion with a lot of the problems in this book, or that uh, let's go back to the let's go back to what's given. They gave us 40 plus or minus one. Right? So what that means is that the measured value of beats was at its upper range, 41, or at its lower range, 39. So if I don't include a decimal here, how many sig figs are there? One. But all of a sudden I include the uh, uh, uncertainty associated with it, and wait a minute, now I, now I get two? That's not possible. So really, what needs to be placed in what's given is a decimal after that 40, okay? That would be consistently, um, or I should say that would be correct, and that would be a much more consistent approach. So that's probably why some of this is a little confusing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that decimal throughout now. All right, so I'm gonna add the decimal to the 40 in my work, and I'm gonna add the decimal to the 80 now. Okay, so we know that um, the beats per minute is 80 beats per minute. Okay, so what did we do? We essentially found um, the measurement here on the left-hand side. We found the first part to the uh, piece of the pie, right? So we know that that's 80 decimal beats per minute. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to work on the second part, right? The, uh, the uncertainty associated with the measurements. Now recall, so we're going to come back to um, this equation uh, that we uh, boxed in before. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working with the total percent uncertainty, okay? So step two is to really find out the total percent uncertainty. 
Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it tells us that in order to find the total percent uncertainty, we need to find the percent uncertainty with the first measurement and the percent uncertainty with the second measurement. So let's break this down into A, and I'll do this part in red. We'll do that B. Okay, so first, part A here. The percent uncertainty associated with measurement one should be equal to the uncertainty of measurement one divided by the measurement itself multiplied by 100. That's just the formula for percent uncertainty. So now, the uncertainty associated with measurement one, by the way, the beats is what I'm considering measurement one. You could have done this, the seconds or the minutes first. It, it really doesn't matter. But just use what's given in the problem. So uh, the uncertainty associated with measurement one was one, right? And the measurement was 40. So take that, multiply it by 100. I'll put my decimal in there. So the percent uncertainty in measurement one was one. So plug it into the calculator, one divided by 40, comes out and then multiply by 100, comes out to 2.5%. But what's the problem? Well, the problem here is that in my calculations, the numerator has only one significant figure, right? So my answer should have no more than one. And so I'm gonna have to round here, right? So appropriately, scientifically speaking, this should be 3%, because I have to round 2.5 to three. Great, now we can do the same approach for part B, right? So the percent uncertainty associated with the measurement will be equal to the uncertainty of measurement two divided by the measurement of two multiplied by 100. So now I'm just taking the uh, time calculations as, as measurement two. So the percent uncertainty associated with measurement two should equal the uncertainty of measurement two so if you go back to the problem, the uncertainty is always the plus or minus value. So that is the 0.5, so 0 0.5, divided by then the 30.0, multiplied by 100. So now when I plug this into the calculator, so the percent uncertainty associated with measurement two should be 0.5 divided by 30. And it comes out to a, and then multiply that by 100, it comes out to a lovely decimal of 1.666 whatever. Seven. Now go back and double check your sig figs. The numerator has only one significant figure. And therefore what that means is that the answer should have no more than one. So what we do, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to round this. So we have to round it now to a value of two percent. Okay, so now we have enough information we need in order to find the total percent uncertainty. Okay, so now, Let's add these two together, all right? So the total, I'll do it over here, total percent uncertainty is gonna be equal to now 3% plus the 2%. Great, and therefore now this should equal 5%. Okay, so going back now, if we look back at our model, right? If we look back at this one, I wrote down here, the percent, uh, excuse me, that the uh, measurement will be plus or minus the total uncertainty. Okay, that's great. So I have total percent uncertainty, and maybe from here I can finally figure out now the total uncertainty. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm gonna write this up at the top. Actually, I'll write it right in the middle. All right, let me put this in, in gold. So this is essentially now the third step of the problem. Okay, so, Instead of also, by the way, so here's the number, the measure, actually, you know, let me put in the number now. So 80, we have 80 beats per minute. And what we could do is we could do plus or minus the percent uncertainty. That would not be um, illegal at all, right? That's a valid way of writing it. Um, so 80 beats per minute plus or minus 5%. Right, because since 80 beats per minute was calculated by taking the two measurements into account, my uncertainty here also is the total uncertainty taking both measurements into account. So we are very we are consistent, right, within this uh, within this value. Okay, but now it didn't ask us right for what is the heart rate and its percent uncertainty in beats per minute. It said what is the heart rate and its uncertainty. 
So this is very, very simple now, okay? All we have to do instead of writing the percent uncertainty here, we just have to now write the total uncertainty, okay? So don't forget what the equation is. I'm gonna to go to the upper left-hand corner. So remember that the percent uncertainty is equal to the uncertainty associated with the measurement divided by the measurement itself multiplied by 100. So what is the percent uncertainty here? It's 5%. The uncertainty value is what we're trying to find. The actual beats per minute that we're uncertain of, not the percent of the beats per minute that we're uncertain of. So then divide that by the measurement itself, which we calculated to be 80, and multiply that by 100. So doing the math out, we could do this in a couple of ways, right? We could say that um, you'll take 100, divide it by 80, right? And that comes out to, what is that, 1.25 multiplied by your uncertainty value. Then just divide out the 1.25, divide out the 1.25 on both sides. So we find that our uncertainty value will be equal to uh, 4, right? I'm just going to double check myself. My brain is, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it equals 4. So now this is the number we need, okay? So this is finally the number we can plug in now for the total uncertainty value, which would also represent the uncertainty, okay? So I'll write that nice and big right here in the middle of the page. So now it should be 80 beats per minute plus or minus four beats per minute. Since it's not an 8% form anymore, we can put the uh, units in. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope this helped. And uh, if it did, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be, uh, that'd be great. All right, until next time.